Good evening. I wrap Steena Flinder and Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up, and this is for Monday, the 26th of July, 2021, just after 7 p.m. I'm back from vacation, had a great time in Montana, beautiful. Chicago's much hotter than Montana. They keep talking how hot it is there, but you do have all that smoke. And you, you know, you look into the mountains where we're at, and it's just hazy, uh, terrible. That's all you can say. The skies, Sometimes they're not even as blue as you'd want and forget seeing stars at night. As for the markets, a little bit of everything going on, but remember what we've got. You've got some economic data coming out, Kay Schiller, the home prices, you saw home sales today. Have we seen the, the top come off that bloom? It could have been in the homes uh, if, if these numbers look right and uh, prices, while well, the house prices are going up still, we're not seeing the, the sales numbers going up. So interesting what's going on there. But we have the FOMC meeting coming out, uh, starts tomorrow, finishes up on Wednesday at one o'clock central time. We'll get the announcement about 1.30. We'll get the press conference. I expect that the Fed uh, announcement's going to delve into the idea that they are discussing, tapering, probably setting a plan, but no execution date for when the plan would happen or going to tell us just how they're going to release that plan. They'll tell us and I keep getting there with transparency that they're talking about things, but that's it. Let me give you this. You still have a rough time getting people to work. Everywhere that I was in Montana, everywhere, there are help wanted signs out. Chicago, they can't get enough help very serious situation. Montana stopped the program of getting those checks out and they still can't get people as kids and so on. Uh, they're the ones working from, from colleges and after that they don't have enough people. I saw places where we were at, which a uh, resort area uh, for sure, where they have to close down some of the restaurants now early because as the kids go back to school, they don't have enough staff to stay open and they are paying up. So. You still got to get to that point. The next point, COVID-19, got a real problem with that. And until we get over whatever this hump is with it, we have to be very careful. We don't even know how effective these vaccines will last through this, but this is the Delta variant. What happens on the next one? So the Fed has to weigh all that and they're going to be very careful. If you think they're just coming out, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to start in December doing that, as some people think. Well, the bond and note market is telling you the exact opposite. You can either pay attention to those that know everything in the press or you can watch the markets and you get to see the real action where people are putting their money. When you look at ARK, you know, ARK has been dumping their Chinese stocks. There's a very serious problem going on here as China has started to really give ARK and other people invested in these markets a problem. Emerging markets, well, they've been a disaster to be investing in as well. The trend is still up. You had a correction. You, that ran its course. You haven't gone back through these lows in that 112 area. But all you did while I was gone is go up to, what do I call the line in the sand? The neutral number? The 18-day average of closes. That's what it is in red. And you stop there. Where's the support right now? Well, once you were underneath the 100 day, you fought your way back up, got into this whole area where the 200 day is support. And if you get under 120.38, then you start rolling over an arc 118.30 next target and potentially 114.71. To prove the market's not going to do that, you've got to get closes up and over this 18-day average without taking out 120.38. Looks to me like the market's got a very mixed bag. Trend up, bias down, neutral momentum. Trying to still stay up. I give it credit for that. And the, the trend is up. But until you can close over that 18-day average, I'm not buying it into that game. How's that? which leads me to GameStop. So GameStop, while I was gone, challenged the 18, I'm sorry, the, the lower Bollinger Band, came right up to the resistance point. Come on. If you're down here, where's the next resistance? That 18-day average is often the line in the sand. Markets have a tendency to go there, and now you're fighting with that and the 100. It, you have a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, unable to close over that number, and that's where you're at right now. So you're in your resistance area. Now, 
if you can close over these two, why not be talking? Going back to the upper Bollinger Band at 212.41. But you got to do that first. You haven't done it. You're in a resistance area. Pave, the infrastructure bill. Well, I don't think you'd bet that it's not going to happen. You might, but the market will bet it does happen. Everybody wants to get to see some type of infrastructure bill done whatever that definition is, it turns out to be as to what is infrastructure. Politicians, though, are playing their games. Uh, House Speaker Pelosi trying to tie two bills together, which is just telling the Republicans don't join into the first one. They won't do that knowing that in order for the first one, they're guaranteeing passage of the second. That isn't going to happen. Yet the market's counting that they're talking spending more money. How could you not want to own the infrastructure ETFs, and that's where you're at. Each time we get there, August 9th is the drop dead date. Why am I saying that? I don't think that the politicians are gonna leave for five weeks, their summer break, five weeks, and be called back to vote on this. You might think they will. This is not the same as COVID, this is infrastructure. AMC, well AMC is having a heck of a time staying at all over this 18 day average of close. We had that one phenomenal run up when the Reddit people drove the market. I own the movie theater. I know I came out and said, I don't understand why this is occurring. They still haven't proven what their new business model is. So it came back from 70 where thanks, I think that AMC should be thanking the Lord. It went there, they wrote a lot of stock, put it out there got the value, and now they have money in the bank where they can at least figure out what to do. I even went to a movie theater in Montana. First one I've gone to since a year ago, I want to say February maybe, or January. A whole back time, that was quite a while ago, right? And look where you're at. You're, you're fighting your, your battle, still trying to figure out what to do. It's another one of these patterns where the trend, because you got higher lows and higher highs is up, but the bias, which is the filter, and that's why I started this whole thing off, of the trend is down and momentum is corrected in oversold condition. When you have an embedded reading like this and you lose it, the odds are extremely strong that the market's going to make a run at the 18-day average of closes or the closest moving average to that. In this case, you have the 100 here, the 200, and the 18 there. That's what the market did, and that's right where it ran out of its momentum. My enhanced Bollinger Band course teaches this in 13 videos. It's right on the website, totally inexpensive, something you probably should take. I'll, I guarantee I'll open your eyes up to something. If you don't like it, just let me know. That's all I can tell you. I'm not giving you the money back. Higher lows, lower highs, okay? But overall, higher lows. Okay, I don't see anything to do with that. The market got underneath the 100-day and for two days under the lower Bollinger Band. 95% of the time you trade within the band. You go on these charts and tell me how many times can you count where you stayed above or below the Bollinger Band. These are what I call the sucker moves. The people down here, oh, it's going to collapse, it's going down. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. This is where it's going to start finding support for a bounce is more like it. Podex, still very much in a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows, can't get these pot people going. If you take a look, both numbers here are under 20. Yesterday, both were under 20, and the day before, they were not. So if tomorrow they're both under 20, the market converts from being oversold into locking in a bear trend, saying we want to go lower until that red line closes back over 20. That's in my enhanced course on, on Bollinger Bands. What did you do here in ESGU? You went from the lower band where I teach, you come out to the higher band where I teach, you come out. You're not embedded, you're just overbought. XLE, another one of these markets which fell apart into a downtrend, ended it as you've come back inside of the Bollinger Bands again, and is now rallying in front of the two-day FOMC meeting. The pattern, higher lows, higher highs, but bias down. You're also correcting an oversold condition. EFA, the emerging market. Okay, daily bar is lower highs, 
lower lows. You had your big washout here, and while I was on vacation, it got back within these numbers. I'd have been screaming while I was here. <laughs> this is where the pros are covering. That's not where they're going short. And bingo, away you're back up there. Are we trending to do anything? No, not in any manner right here so far. Now, should the market take out 7937 you would have a pattern of higher lows higher highs but you'd be so overbought any reading over 70 it's another filter when you do that i don't think you attract new money to buying something gld you're back down in a downtrend into the support you're bearish you've got lower highs lower lows you closed under the 18 day average but as i said in my morning subscriber video if you go short there you're only looking for 16801 the 100 uh, day average and you're already oversold it's not worth pursuing that was basically what i told my paid subscribers today gdx too oversold so you keep hitting the lower band i get it as you hit the upper band, you didn't go anywhere there. You're not going anywhere under that band for any lasting period so far, at least. TLT, we had this move to the upside that I think caught many people by surprise. A month ago, it was a given. We were going to 175 to 2 in the 10-year note. We now have a real negative yield. If you take inflation and the 128 to 130 that you're getting on a 10-year note, and you subtract it, you got a negative return. That's why the stock market keeps getting bid. There's nowhere else to put money. Last in the euro. Seems to just be caught here in an oversold condition under the 18-day average. Now, when you're under that 18-day average, your filter is you're looking for reasons to be short, not long. I teach that in everything that I do. So as I said, I put out videos. Now let me tell you what I do with this one. At 8.30 to 8.40, I open my charts up and I do a series of numbers and I, I start plotting lines like this on those charts. For my subscribers, you don't get them here. This is a freebie and you're not gonna get anywhere near what I do for the other people. I put out for, out for my paid subscribers typically on a, a Saturday, a weekend version of 40 some odd charts with just weekly charts giving you the longer term. Every morning though, I will cover Monday through Friday with the day's news. I will review all these markets. I hit that a little too late. That's why it's uh, moving like that on your blurred. But I'll cover all the main sectors for you. And what do I do with that? Well, the goal of me is to try to get you into the idea that in the mornings you might say, you know, I want to see what I was thinking of. Uh, GameStop, Apple, what, what's he thinking of these different markets? I even make it where you can come into my webinars, which I typically hold once a week now, and you can ask me the questions. They're quick, they're meant to be, they go no longer than 20 minutes, that's self-imposed by me, and I don't record them to put them on a website. You either attend or you miss it, but you get to ask all the questions. All right. Your seating is the first ones that we make available, but if you don't register right away, you won't get into the, the room because it fills up. This is what I was saying. This is what I'm covering for you. So if you look at those and you hit pause, you can see everything that I'm doing. The cost for the 30-day period, $8.95. No contract with me, $16 after that, but we give you a reduction if you buy a year up front, and that's what a lot of people do. How do you find out more? Go to our website under the word research and take it the rest of the way. I'm Ira. See you later this week. Take care.